This is a fourth grade lesson on drawing the figure in proportion based on the work of Keith Haring. Our Common Core standard is identify the reasons and evidence a speaker provides to support particular points. Our main idea in grade four is that artists create art based on life experiences and module three, artists document people and their lives. The art standards are describe the concept of proportion in face and figure as used in works of art. Use the conventions of facial and figure proportions in a figure study. Use accurate proportions to create an expressive portrait or a figure drawing or painting. Our objective is to grasp the concept of proportion through using it in the drawing of the human figure. First, we're going to look at art that involves the human figure. And we're going not only going to look at proportion, but we especially want to look at gesture. We've already drawn the face in previous lessons and head, which tells us about how the character's feeling. It gives us the emotion or the mood of the piece. However, it's the body that really tells the story. And if we look at these two, we can see the one on the left, we see the people standing here at the stoplight on a corner. And I ask the students, I say, are these people together? No. Do they know each other? No. And what are they doing? They're waiting. Then we look at this player, which is a, Dra excuse me, a Dwayne Hansen sculpture. And it's very, very lifelike. And I asked them, I said, OK, is this before or after the game? After. And did they win? No. We can tell that by his body language. And that's what gesture is. Now, if we look at these two, the first one we're going to look at is Auguste Renoir's daughters. And they're playing a, new, a piano piece. And I asked the students, I said, OK, is this one they've, they've done a lot? No. Could it be a new piece that they're working out? Yes. So we can tell that just from the girl's body language. And if we look over to this one, which is a Diego Rivera, we notice that the man looks like he's about to fall over. Rivera did that on purpose. Now, why would he do that? And we discuss that. And then we look very closely in the background, and we see these two women talking. And I ask, I ask the students, I say, OK, what are they talking about? Hmm. Well, it looks like they're talking about somebody. Are they being nice? No. It looks like gossip. So they can start picking things out once we learn. And then we look at this. Um, this is by a couple of English artists named Noble and Webster. And what they've done is they saved the recycling from their, from their flat, their apartment, for about a month. And then they go in a gallery and they pile it up so that when they shine a single light on it, the shadow creates a self-portrait. And we can see the two of them here. And it's simply a shadow of the trash that they've sculpted. And then we're going to look at the work of Keith Haring. And I tell them Keith Haring was a professional artist. He was trained. He worked in New York as a graphic artist. And yet, nights and weekends, he was a graffiti artist. And back in the 60s and 70s, this was work that Keith Haring did. And it was very new back then. But he incorporated the elements of cartoon where we use those, those gesture or those motion lines. And he was the first one to do that. So we can see this when I say, what are they doing? And I have them try and imagine without the gesture lines, does it still look like they're dancing or do they look like they're having a brawl? Here's another one. 
again, there are two coyotes dancing. And then we look at a lot of these so we can actually get a real feeling for the type of work and how clever he actually was. And then I start talking about proportion. I'll remind them what is proportion. It's things being the right size, the parts, all the parts being the right size and the right shape to fit together. And I show them this. And we look at two silhouettes of fashion models, and I explain that, you know, we measure horses by how many hands high they are. We measure people by how many of their own heads high they are. So these people are both eight heads high, which is convenient since it's, a, it's an even number. But we look, and we can see the one head. Then at one and a half heads, we have the shoulders. At two heads, we have the armpit, and we always count down. Three is the waist and the elbows. Four is the wrist and the hips. Then five thighs. Six is the kneecap, seven calves, and the eight is the bottom of the feet. So I'm giving them the idea that we can actually divide up the figure so we, we actually get it where it looks real. And then I show them this because, well, for one thing, they love skeletons and it keeps their, keeps their attention. But also I ask them, okay, what is in the middle of the body between the top of the head and the bottom? And they come up with all sorts of things. And I say, well, wait a minute. Look at this. Here's the skeleton. And if we put the bottom of the feet right at the top of the head and crease it, when we open it up, it'll be in the middle. And what's in the middle? Ah, the hips. And then I show them that the hips and the wrists are even, which will help them in drawing, too. Um, I, I'm... I go over all the proportions of the body with them, and we put them in our journals, but I feel like what they really will remember is that the hips are in the middle of the body, and we make a joke about, you know, we had to be built in the first place where we were half legs so we could run like crazy when some big animal looked at us and went, ooh, lunch. So I have them take a piece of lined paper, and we make a mark. We skip a line. We make a mark until we have nine marks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Whoops. Okay, so we draw our head in the first mark. And then we count down four heads. One, two, three, four. There's the middle. But how wide do we make them? If we make the hips about twice as wide as the head, that's pretty good. Then I remind them to draw this really quickly. I think I made those a little wide. Because our spine is not actually straight. And then, well, where do you think the knees will be? Yes, they're down about six heads. And then we make sure we leave some kind of mark there so we can see where the feet are and put them out. The shoulders are one and a half heads down. Again, let's make them about twice as wide as the head. And now I have the students stand up and bend their arms at the elbows and stick them out and kind of wiggle and say, okay, where are your elbows? Wow, they're at the waist. So we draw them down to the waist. And then we stand up again and we check and see where our wrists are. Well, they're right at the hips. So we can put our wrists down to the hips. And then the hands, I just go ahead and tell them because it's too complicated for them. I tell the hands are about three quarters of what the head is. So we can put the hands down like, like this. And then we, some, we label that the hips and wrists are at at the middle, which we're going to say, we'll just say is four heads down. And I usually have them put that little mark so we realize it's four heads down. Then we're going to go here and shoulders one and a half down. And then the waist 
and elbows. R. Let's just put three heads down. And then we know the knees are at six. And that eight is the heels. So we can make a quick sketch like this, put it in their journal so they, they actually remember it. And then I tell them it's time to start and that I know this is a lot of information, so I will be really happy if they can remember that the hips are in the middle and the wrists come to the hips. So we're going to start, but we're going drawing, but we're going to concentrate on gesture. So we go ahead and start looking at some samples. But first, I give them we're going to make a little yarn person so it helps them and I give them two pieces of yarn that are eight inches long one piece that's six and show them how to put it together so we make a U out of the one long piece then we make an upside down U whoops, out of the other piece and we overlap it then we put the two ends together from the bottom and we're just going to reach right through this and pull. And it helps if we hold on to the top ones now. And if we pull, we've got a, we've got a set of legs, but we're going to leave the top together because we're going to take our six inch piece and put it down about where we think the shoulders would be. And we're going to tie that. So now we have a little, little man. This is our character. And we're going to go ahead and draw around that to make our characters. So let's take a look at some examples before we start. These are all based on the work of Keith Haring. This, of course, is swim practice with the coach. And we can see that we've done this. Now, on these first examples, um, I've, had the, I've had them paint them in in either watercolor or tempera, depending on what experience the class has already had. Here's a relay race. They tell me it's a relay race. What's this? This is people working out with a trainer in pink. They laugh at this one. This is people lined up to go to the men's room at the stadium. And what's this? This one is people jumping off a cliff. Now you'll notice in some of them I've created somewhat of a margin around them just to frame it out. And I do show them that and I leave it up to the students. Now, if I have two classes to work, to work with or two class section, sessions, then we go ahead and we paint. However, sometimes I have one session, so that's when I do collage. So you can see, here's one, the guy's telling him to stop and he's threatening him. Here's another that I haven't put the motion lines in yet because first I want them to actually take a look at the figure. So of course these people are dancing. And then I tell them they have a choice if they want to make two or three characters. It doesn't really matter. And they need to choose the colors they're going to use. Usually a color, a background color that the black lines are going to show up on works really well. And then we want to go ahead and 
make our characters. So let's see. And I usually have them. We actually go to the board and list as many different activities as we can think of. So I think I'm going to have my people coming down from parachutes. And so I put my little guy here and maybe have him like he's, like he's just landing. I want his arms up. So I show them that we go ahead and draw the head round. Then we can have the hands coming up. And maybe here. We're going to have him here. Now, I remind them not to make them too skinny. And then we've got a leg here. And a leg coming up here. And back down. And there's a character right there. So, we make several characters. And I do. I show them several characters. I'm making these a little big because it's easier for them to see. And then maybe another one is going to just be touching down and still holding on. But maybe this time with the arms straight up. So we make our head. We're going to have this arm coming straight up. This one again, coming almost straight up. And they just make a little ball type thing for the hand. And then here, and here, leg up. They catch on to this pretty fast. And there's another character. We can see it. And that's it. Once we get our characters, I'm only going to put two on this because it's not necessary for three. And we cut them out. But really, rather than demonstrate too much on cutting out, you can see we'll cut them out, figure out where they should be placed, and then I'm just going to go back to this one because we can see it so well. And I usually give them a thin black pen and a wider marker. It generally works out best to do around the character with the dark marker. However, because I have three characters here, I'm thinking I'll be better off going around them with the black. So, of course, that's very easy when it's collage because the, we just ride right along the edge. And I'm getting my dancers here. And I tell them not to worry too much if they get out of line a little because there will be enough going on that we don't notice the little places that we miss. There we go. We can already see how much that makes that character stand out. And if you want a character to look like they're looking back or looking forward, you can always put a little bit of a chin line. And now we can see on this one that this dancer is actually looking this way. And we can go down and around. And you can see they're out of proportion, but it, it really doesn't matter. When I say out of proportion, I mean like the hand to the wrist. But we basically have the arms long enough, and we've got the hips in the middle. And let's get this one done. And then we really have to talk about how the motion lines are. They're used to seeing them in cartoons, but they've never really had to focus and pay attention before. 
as to what the movement is. So that's what, let's do that to that one too, so they're looking down. And we have to talk about which direction and once we talk about it for a little bit and do a few examples, then they get it. This one, the head's be coming back, so we can do this. And they can do two or three. Sometimes if it's a fast movement, they want to make straight lines. If it's slower movement, do a curved one. This hand is just about to go back up. And we know that this back is being bent. Uh, this hand is going out, so we want this. So we saw a, show a stretch there. And we can put some here. So we can see on all of them that we're looking. We want to show the heads going that way. We can do that. Um, we could put this up here to even show more that the head's looking back and we're turning the body. So maybe we're going to twist this and bring this leg up a little and show this is in the back. So we can do there, do here, and pretty much we know these are coming out, so let's make some lines coming out this way. And here, because we want to show the movement. And we're just showing our dancers moving and we have, our, we have our artwork based on the work of Keith Haring. And we've worked on body proportions also. With this, in their art journals, when we finish, I go ahead and have them write about what's going on, who's there. They have to give their characters names and say what they're, you know, talk about what they're doing, what they're feeling, what they hope for. And they basically write, you know, a few paragraphs about it so that we do have some language coming into it. And that is our proportion lesson based on Keith Herring.